All right, so now I will be trying my luck again with some of the Haswell i7 CPUs. So I got a few 4790Ks to uh, bin, and this is the last one. So uh, I just want to see if I have any luck this time. Uh, back in the day, like uh, like four years ago, five years ago, I had one of the world's best Haswell CPUs, 4770K. That was an amazing CPU, both on water and on LN2. On LN2, it was able to do uh, 6.4 plus in Cinebench. And uh, I got the rank one score in Hardware Bot Prime. That was absolutely insane. Other guys were doing like 6.6 .6 max with like SPD uh, memories. So, so like they wanted to uh, leave everything else at auto or at minimal value so that they could absolutely push the core to the absolute highest like level. And I was able to pass 6.63 very, very easily with good memories. I had Samsung D, Trident, Trident X memories on LN2. All of them were running at really high speed and I still got the rank 1 score. And I also even got rank 1 score in uh, GPU Pi 1 billion, but I was stupid back in the day. I forgot to save the, uh, <laughs> the validation file, so I could never uh, post the score, but still, it was amazing. The CPU speed was like 6.53. So, uh, but sadly, uh, that, that particular CPU happened to die because I got a faulty... Uh, uh, board sample from RMA, so a bad Z97 OC formula, and it had a short in the VRM. So it killed two CPUs, the 4770K and a random Pentium. I think it was a Pentium, and uh, so I had to RMA those. So, uh, but anyways, that's something I cannot revert anymore, but uh, I still would like to get a good CPU, and I actually never had a good 4790K, so the Devil's Canyon refresh model. So I uh, sometimes I still would like to get a good one. So uh, now I'm trying my luck. So this is a 4790K, quite late batch one from 2015. A Vietnamese one, like I think it's X543B. So it means it's from week 43 of 2015. So it's quite late one. Some Vietnamese ones were really amazing. And uh, many of the, like the early Malays were really good. Some of the 4790Ks are absolutely insane CPUs on water, at least. The best one was, I think it was like a prize CPU from an Asus competition back in like 2014 or 2015. Uh, and it was able to do six point, I mean 5.4 gigahertz in XDU on water with like 1.45 to 1.5 volts. And remember, XTU uses AVX instruction sets. So 5.4 in XTU means it could have done, if not, but at least close to 5.5 gigahertz in Cinebench on water. That is absolutely insane figure. So the uh, level of quality we are searching for is really, really, really high. So uh, it's highly unlikely that we will find anything like that, but hey, why not try your luck? The hardest part about bidding these CPUs is to get rid of the bad ones, which you don't want to keep. These aren't that easy to sell anymore, most of the time, because of many people want to get like new uh, Ryzen rigs for their daily systems. So these aren't that interesting see, uh, computer parts anymore. So it's hard to get rid of the bad ones when we reject most of the CPUs because they aren't good enough. But anyways, so let's try this 4790K quickly. So the rig is ASRock Z97 OC formula. Yes, I still like it the most, even though I had so much misery with the board, with the board model. But I still think it's by far the easiest and if not the strongest board to use for the whole uh, Haswell generation. 4790K deleted with Thermal Grizzly conductor out under the IHS and KPX on top of the IHS. Then a Superflower 2000 watt power supply with both 8 pin power connectors connected over here. Galaxy 710 GT, just simple SSD and uh, the memory is over here. As you can see, they are actually they are custom memory heatsink modules made by Barts. You can find these from Barts store on Facebook and similar. 
These heat sinks are really, really good for dual-sided power chip based DDR3 memories, if you ask me. The actual sticks are Patriot, Wiper 2, Sector 5, 2500 MHz, Cas9 sticks. Those are extremely rare power chip based memories from Patriot. They are pretty much the best and really the only good ones from Patriot. The, low, the one step lower bin, the 2400 Cas9, they were usually really, really bad compared to competition like G-Skill Pi series and similar. The 2500 Cas9 are really, really good overall. I even did 2800 plus 69621 on LM2 with them. But of course it requires really good IMC and skill, but it's possible. And I really like these sticks, so the, I, these are just here for me to use. So that's pretty much it. P PS2 keyboard and so on. So let's try this briefly. We can use any operating system we want. It doesn't really matter if we just use something like Cinebench to test the uh, to test the uh, level of quality. Good 4790K or Haswell will do like 5 GHz multi-core with less than 1.3 volts. My golden 4770K did, uh, I still remember it, it did 5 GHz in Cinebench with 1.28 volts without deleting. And with delete it came down to like 1.25 the voltage requirement for 5 gigahertz in Cinebench. And uh, the best 4790Ks are actually better on water or air than the absolute the absolute best 4770Ks. But the common thing about 4790Ks is that they don't usually scale that well with temperatures like on LM2 compared to the uh, oldest and really uh, like high leakage 4770Ks which run really hot, like my golden one. That, re that scaled really, really well with temperatures. So it doesn't, it's not a guarantee if you get a really nice 4790K, like the 5.4 GHz XT1, that it will be the best CPU on LM2. It might not scale well at all, so just bear that in mind. But yeah, so uh, let's get started. Okay, so now I'm in the bus, so we can quickly try uh, the uh, actual CPU stability first. So with auto memories, we don't need them for now. So we have just set 50 on all core all core CPU ratio with 44 mesh and 100 base clock. I have enabled like the PLL, internal PLL oil voltage and so on. And I have maxed out the uh, uh, power limits. So 4000 watts, 56 seconds, 4000 watts and 1000 watts limit on the primary plane current limit. Memory is all left at auto because we, I don't want it to uh, do any kind of like harm at this point. We, I just want to see the core first. The uh, I like the Z97 OC formula BIOS. So when it comes to the FIVR, I just have I just max out the uh, like the uh, power settings for the FIVR. So uh, switching frequency is positive with 1.5 offset. This is the max value we can use. Increasing it will. Uh, might it might improve stability, but it might just increase the temperatures. I have disabled uh, the VR faults and the efficiency mode for the FIVR. Then uh, I have set 1.3 volts on the V core. We can try with that. 1.3 on the cache. Something on uh, system agent and I/O. I usually like 1.50 to 1.2 volts on them. Input, usually 1.9 volts is enough for everything. Increasing input voltage doesn't really help that much on air or water, no matter if it's a 4770K or 4790K, it's pretty much the same as with X299 CPUs nowadays. It, you don't really get any better overclock with 2.1 input voltage compared to 1.9. Too low might just give uh, efficiency issues, so I, I would recommend you use a value of 1.9. Level 1 is the highest low line vibration setting, I usually use that. Maximum on the input voltage switching frequency, so 1 MHz, it's the hardest, highest setting we can use. Memory is just 1.7 volts as they are auto. Max on the uh, switching frequency when you overclock the MEMS. And uh, I just usually type in the stop values or near the stop value, because sometimes the BIOS might set a weird value by itself. So when I 
set this manually to the stock value, I know they will not change to any weird value by themselves. So that's pretty much it. We don't have to do anything else in uh, the advanced part or anything. So uh, let's see if we can boot 5 gigahertz at 1.3 volts. Temperatures look all right, 23.5 degrees on the CPU. It shouldn't be that much under load. Okay, so let's see what happens. And boom! So it's not stable. It's not stable even with 5G at 1.3 volts, so that's already a quite bad sign. Okay, so after trying for a while, it seems that this CPU can do like 5 gigahertz around 1.36 Vico with 1.9 input. So can see the temperatures here. So uh, 5G on the 4790K and look at the max temperatures, only like 55C. It's really, really cool. It's like the temperatures aren't really an issue at all. And it's running. Of course, the memories are at SPD stocks, so they aren't stressing the IMC at all at, at this moment. Cache, it seems that the max is like 4.6 or 4.7 with 1.3 to 1.35 volts. So 997 points. I tried this for a while and it seems to be the like lowest, lowest vehicle, like 1.35 to 1.36. As you can see over here, so 5G on the 4790K, 1.36 volts, 4.4 on the 4.4 on the anchor for this part. So we can try 4.6. Let's try uh, 1.35 on the cash voltage. So now it increased to 4.6. Doesn't really matter that much. The cache isn't that important on uh, these CPUs. The core does most of the performance, anyways. Memory is much more important than cache on the Haskell platform and even on Skylake and newer platforms, pretty much. For example, when I'm on LN2, I don't try to max out the cache always, like really like 100%. I just put it to some reasonable value and then just let it there, let it be there. So uh, it's like the third in terms of importance order. First is the core, then memory, and then last one is the cache. And look, score didn't really improve that much at all, 994. So yeah, then I tried uh, 5.1. It's actually, it's very, very easy. So it's very easy at like when, when you set, when you set over 1.45 for this test I used I used 1.46 sadly it's not that accurate but hey let's so yeah 1.46 something that's what I used for 5.1 10 1014 points 4.5 on the cache and temperatures were like mid 60s so it doesn't really matter that much so uh, it's quite an average, it's far from the legendary CPUs like the 5.4 XTU 1.5 volts. So uh, this can't really challenge those. So this is like an average. If I had to put, if I had to rate it from range one to five, I would say this is like 3.5 to four in that range. So it's not, I, I, I wouldn't put like 4.5 out of five. So yeah, so let's try uh, memory quickly, if this is good at all, as I already know what these memories can do. Okay, so I will try the very common power chip profile of 2666 megahertz with, with uh, 8, 12, 8 timings and most of the sub timings set manually. These sticks can do that easily with like 1.86 volts, so I set 1.88, I will leave the SA and IO just out of curiosity, I will leave them an auto, see if, if, if these can even post, but I, it's not certain that it, that it's, it's not certain that this CPU will do this combination. So 
so yeah, no dilemma. Need to see with manually set SA and IO. As the system agent and IO voltage are, voltages are controlled uh, as in offsets, we can look at the uh, stock value first. So 0.84 on the uh, system agent, I will put 0.4 positive offset. So it should be it should be like 1.24. And IO, I'm trying to get like around like 1.25. Let's see if this helps at all. Almost, so it's close, but still not like completely stable. Okay, so I was actually able to post 2600 megahertz, but very, very like briefly or like it's very on the edge. So it's not like 100% stable at all. Same timings as I showed, and really high system agent than I.O. So around 1.3 volts on both of them. So plus 0.4, plus 0.44, and plus uh, 0.28 on uh, I.O. So it's really, really on the edge. 2666 doesn't post with these uh, voltages. So I can try one more time, but the, if it's not going to do 2666, it's not going to be anywhere close to like 2800 megahertz, which these sticks can do even on air. And many good 4770Ks can do 2800, 8, 12, 8 uh, memories even on air. So uh, this doesn't really feel that good. So I can try, I will try 1.5 as last option for 2666. So let's try. Nope. Oh well. And these sticks can surely do this configuration, so it's not about the memory sticks. I have seen many CPUs like this that have really big issues posting 2666 or similar uh, memory timings or memory configurations. Try one more time with 1.3. Not, or I mean point 0.3 in the I.O. Now it posts, but really really on the edge as you can see. So it could even crash. Yeah, it's crashing, so it's not even going to the BIOS. So yeah, it doesn't really seem that good. So yeah, I think I will just sell this, C sell this CPU. It's not enough for my purposes. I need a CPU that does good enough in terms of in terms of the core, even on air or water. And uh, to be able to challenge the top score in 32 m you really need a good IMC. So the CPU has to be able to do around 2800 megahertz with these particular sticks with 8128 8 timings, even on air or water cooling. So uh, this is not good enough, so I will just end up selling this. The core is quite okay. It can do like 4.9 to 5 gigahertz daily. So it's quite okay, but it's not golden. So yeah, I guess there's nothing else really about this. You can pretty much see the settings if you have any other, if you have any other like Haswell CPU you want to bin like I did here. You can use these settings, and this is the most common uh, config, uh, memory timing profile for power chips. So 2666 or above, 8128, 8128281. These aren't the tightest possible timings, but they are quite okay. So yeah, I guess that's pretty much it.